Retina Rounds, episode number 153. Bimanual dissection is an efficient and effective surgical technique to dissect fibrovascular membranes off the retinal surface. Now, typically, this approach is used in cases of combined tractional and regmatogenous retinal detachment, where the underlying retina is mobile and dissection of tightly adherent membranes with the cutter alone raises the risk of iatrogenic retinal breaks. Since the technique requires the active use of both hands, it can be challenging for beginning surgeons. Our video today is presented by an anonymous vitreoretinal fellow seeking feedback on their surgical technique. Let's check out the case and we'll highlight the importance of direction and angle of dissection to improve efficiency and safety. Okay, you can see here that this patient has uh, advanced proliferative diabetic retinopathy with a wolf jaw configuration of fibrovascular proliferation around the arcades and then connecting in the temporal macula. The surgeon here is starting by performing a corvitrectomy and is now segmenting the anterior and posterior vitreous 360 degrees. And of course, the, the purpose of this is to get access to and identify the correct surgical plane. And identifying the correct surgical plane is critical for uh, cases of uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The dissection needs to take place right at the vitro-retinal interface, so where the posterior cortical gel and the underlying retina uh, meet. And that can be challenging to identify since diabetic vitreous can be highly skittic, and so there can be multiple layers of vitreous. You can see here the, uh, that segmentation has been performed, and now the surgeon is trying to use the cutter to identify the proper surgical plane, uh, and in these cases, using some uh, dilute triamcinolone, as is being demonstrated here, can be helpful to better see uh, where the residual vitreous is and to make sure that that dissection is taking place uh, in the correct plane. So now you can see that there is a space here in the temporal, uh, the temporal macula. The cutter is being used to uh, get underneath that membrane to gently elevate up uh, the residual uh, vitreous that's over the posterior pole and then to dissect, uh, really just segmenting here uh, the, uh, the posterior cortical vitreous uh, along the horizontal meridian. Uh, and that's going to allow for breaking up this very complex fibrovascular proliferation into smaller, more manageable pieces. Now you can see that the surgeon has switched over to a bimanual technique, and there's a couple of things that I would, I would notice here. One is the, uh, the forceps that are being held in the right hand are not adequately being pulled back to reveal the correct surgical plane. Now, now that's much better. You can see that that membrane is being, the, being reflected backwards, and the idea here is that you want that membrane to be pulled back so that you can see uh, the, that interface between the gel and the underlying retina, and then using the scissors, you wanna uh, then either bluntly dissect uh, between fibrovascular pegs uh, and then use the, uh, the open scissors to actually cut the fibrovascular pegs right at the base, right where they emanate from uh, the retinal surface. So what I'm noticing here is that there's uh, this membrane is being pulled in more of an anterior posterior direction rather than being pulled uh, in a towards the nasal retina to be better uh, reflect back this uh, this membrane and to allow for easier dissection. You can see a small iatrogenic retinal break is created there. Now again, using the forceps to hold that membrane back, I'd like to see that membrane being folded back a little bit more so that we can see this uh, interface. And uh, you can see here that the scissors are being used to, uh, to uh, cut this uh, fibrovascular peg uh, from the retinal surface. Now, the, the posterior surface of the eye, of course, is curved, and so these scissors are curved scissors, and going in a posterior to anterior approach can sometimes be a bit more challenging. You do have to take a more vertical approach when going posterior to anterior, as opposed to an anterior to posterior approach, approach where you can just follow the curvature uh, of the globe, especially in the superior retina, you can just follow the curvature of the globe towards the posterior pole. Now you can see here uh, this, this posterior membrane that's being pulled, and again, this, the angle here is really tough. You know, what I, what I would much rather see is a more temporal to nasal or nasal to temporal approach. In this case, by, by going posterior to anterior, you see that the scissors are very vertically oriented, and that vertical orientation is going to be um, a setup for potentially creating an iatrogenic retinal break. Now, this approach is much better. You see here the, uh, the membrane that's being held um, uh, and this, the scissors that are, being, uh, that are dissecting in more of a, uh, a nasal to temporal approach. This is gonna be far more efficient. You see the closed scissors there bluntly dissecting and now using the open scissors to cut these fibrovascular membranes. Uh, so I like this approach. I would like to see that membrane being held 
uh, with a little bit more uh, traction so that you can see, we can see that space a little bit better. But this is a much, much better approach. I think the angle here of going uh, nasal to temporal is, is, far, uh, is far safer. All right, so now using the vitreous cutter to elevate uh, the anterior edge of the hyloid here uh, and debulking some of this, uh, some of the vitreous anterior to this fibrovascular membrane. Uh, and you can see here as the cutter is being pulled, there, there's a, a, uh, an, another iatrogenic break, a slit break that's created there. And so that will need to be dissected with, uh, with a bimanual approach. Now you can see here again, the forceps, look at the direction of the forceps. They're, pull, they're, they're pulling in the same direction as uh, the, the scissors. And you want the, um, you want the, the forceps to be pulling in, in, the, in the other direction. You want it to be pulled more nasally to reflect back and show, these, uh, show this plane a little bit more, uh, a little bit better. So let's have a look at the dissection here. You can see, I'd like to see this as being more of a temporal to nasal approach rather than dissecting along the posterior edge of this fibrovascular membrane. I think it'll make it a lot, uh, a lot safer, a lot lower risk for creating an iatrogenic uh, retinal break, and I think a lot more efficient as well. So rather than pulling posterior to anterior, I'd like to see this membrane being pulled uh, more uh, temporal to nasal. Now you can see that's a more of a temporal to nasal uh, pulling that's revealing uh, this uh, this um, interface here between the uh, the membrane and the underlying retina, and I think that's going to be a safer approach. You see the uh, the 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 left hand the the angle that that scissor is going in, it, it wants to go in a temporal to nasal uh, direction, and you can see here uh, this is a far uh, more efficient way of dissecting. I'd like to see that membrane being pulled back a little bit more. Uh, during this uh, this process, that's much better, uh, and you can see that that interface there. So just marking some of the retinal breaks here with diathermy again. Those are the posterior breaks. So you can you see that there was multiple breaks that were created on the posterior edge of this membrane because of that more vertical approach that you have to take when going posterior to anterior. So much better to take a temporal to nasal or nasal to temporal approach with a superior membrane, just owing to the curvature of the globe. Uh, and also the orientation of these instruments that are uh, more superiorly oriented. So again, using, uh, I like this, going temporal, now uh, uh, nasal to temporal, uh, and then using uh, the forceps to reveal that plane, and then the scissors are being used to very carefully uh, cut these, uh, these uh, fibrovascular uh, stalks uh, from the retinal surface. And you can see how efficient uh, this is uh, at, at removing these membranes without creating uh, undo um, traction on the retina and uh, without creating any iatrogenic retinal breaks in this case. That's very nicely done. You can see that that membrane has been completely removed. It's removed now with the vitreous cutter uh, and there are some, some residual uh, hyaloid attachments that are here uh, nasally. Uh, and you can see the, uh, the surgeon pulling this membrane towards the nasal periphery, revealing that space, and then using the scissors, you can see that this uh, is uh, just being, the scissors are just being used to cut the fibrovascular pegs, and then the forceps are being used to just elevate up uh, the residual hyaloid here on the nasal aspect. I like the use of the, curve, of the uh, closed scissors to bluntly dissect to create space, and then the open scissors to actually cut uh, these fibrovascular membranes. You just have to make sure that these uh, that the orientation of the scissors is as flat as possible. Uh, the more vertically oriented the scissors are, especially with a with the with a posterior to anterior approach, um, the the more likely you will uh, get an iatrogenic retinal break. All right, now once all those membranes have been removed, uh, some peripheral shaving is being performed. I like the use of scleral depression here uh, to make sure that as much of the peripheral uh, vitreous is trimmed back as possible. You can see that there's uh, quite a bit of residual vitreous in the superior retina here. The retina is highly mobile, so you do wanna adjust some of the parameters of the vitrectomy uh, system just to uh, decrease the risk again of an nitrogenic break. So switching to a shave mode here would be a good idea or even using perfluorocarbon liquid to stabilize a posterior pole while the shave is being performed. 
just uh, elevating up here the, uh, the hyaloid up to the level of the vitreous base to facilitate um, as thorough uh, removal of vitreous and shaving as possible. Now there are a number of breaks, of course, that, that uh, occurred during this fibrovascular uh, membrane dissection. However, uh, the, the hyaloid looks to be very nicely elevated off of the retinal surface. All the residual traction uh, has been relieved and now some lasers being performed around these breaks and some PRP is being performed to the retinal periphery. All right, so here's some take home points. Bimanual dissection can be a more efficient and safer surgical approach when dissecting uh, fibrovascular membranes off of detached retina. Now with respect to the forceps, it's important that the forceps reveal the appropriate surgical plane, which is right at the vitreoretinal interface to make the dissection easier. And so ideally the forceps should retract and reflect back the membrane to reveal this plane. So you wanna have those forceps pulling away from the scissors so that the scissors can then dissect in that appropriate surgical plane. And the degree of traction or the degree of pulling uh, with the forceps should be at a moderate level to facilitate the dissection, but not so much traction that an iatrogenic retinal break is created. Now the scissors, on the other hand, should be positioned at an angle that's as flat as possible over the retinal surface. Again, given the, the posterior curvature of the globe, curved horizontal scissors are ideal to dissect in the vitro-retinal interface without creating iatrogenic retinal breaks. And as we could see in this case at times, uh, it would be uh, safer and more efficient to dissect in a nasal to temporal approach or a, um, a temporal to nasal direction, uh, especially in the superior retina. In other instances, an anterior to posterior or posterior to anterior approach may be preferred. And generally speaking, dissection in an anterior to posterior direction may be safer uh, in the superior retina and a posterior to anterior approach may be preferred in the inferior retina given the curvature of the globe and the position of the trocars and the surgical instruments in the superior, uh, superior uh, hemisphere of the, of the eye. The ideal use of scissors when performing bimanual dissection is to use closed scissors to bluntly dissect spaces between fibrovascular pegs and then to use the open scissors to straddle and then cut the fibrovascular peg pegs right where they emanate from the retinal surface. And, and dissecting in this way uh, in, the, in that appropriate uh, surgical plane can minimize the risk of iatrogenic breaks and decrease the risk of intraoperative bleeding. Now for this fellow, there were times where the technique was perfectly executed, other times where either the direction of pulling with the forceps or the dissection of the scissors, uh, the, the, the sharp dissection of the scissors could be modified to improve both the efficiency and safety of the surgical technique. Now mastery uh, of this technique of course takes time and reps and we wanna commend this fellow for sharing this case and for giving us all an opportunity to learn more about bimanual dissection. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.